everybody. Welcome back to the Winter Spectacular. My name is Tom Vassell. My name is Z Garcia. Hello. I am Mike Delicio. Hello. And I am Roy Kennedy. Mm. Uh -uh. No contractions for him. All righty, <laughs> folks. We are here to talk about the best of 2020 in our opinions. But before we do so, we want to say thanks to some of our Kickstarter backers who somehow got into this particular video. That's great. That means you're the best backers of 20. No, that is not what that means. <laughs> but we appreciate you. Thank you to Ryan Smith, to Guami, to Babish Ooh. Patel, to Vince Puderek, to Jason and Vanessa Wallace. And William wants us to say thank you to all the real heroes of the COVID-19 crisis. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. And Guami, you are the werewolf. <laughs> you don't know that. He couldn't just be he acting could be the like seer. the werewolf. <laughs> All righty, folks. Well, we're, uh, uh, let's talk about this first of all. So we're doing the best of 2020. Each year, this is always a problematic thing to figure out for a few reasons. One, the we usually go by the dates on board Game Geek, and those dates are not always correct because the game was supposed to come out in 2019 or sometimes in 2018. So we go by... We try to go by when they came out, but it, it's easy to miss or forget or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually working on a list now for next year where I'm listing games that are supposed mm -hmm. to be out in 2020 that aren't out yet. So they're coming out in 2021. So keep that in mind that there might be a game here that you say that's a 2019 game. No. Well, at least according to us. Secondly, <laughs> right. we haven't played everything. Now, we come closer than almost anybody else, I think. But there are a few, a few games. games. Uh, I can think of, well, Praga just came in today. Yeah. Um, and there's a few other games that I thought, eh, maybe they might have a chance. Mm -hmm. But I think we played a good chunk of games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a wide swath of the 2020 releases we hit. Yeah. And then I personally exclude it. This is just from my list. I did not make anyone else do this. I excluded games that were reprints and reworkings of other games. And I actually... Huh? <laughs> I knew he was doing that, and I told him, no, nah, not today. Well, yeah. well, I did that because there was so many of them this year. And so that list has already been posted. We did. I did that list earlier today. Um, I mostly I did that, too. I want to be clear. Just I did. Put it, put I, I, I'm uh, like Tom. I'm the only one who kept my list pure. So we have a couple of tainted lists. <laughs> There's nothing wow. about Mike Delisio that's pure. pure. It's like balancing the scales. Two pure lists and two tainted lists. Well, I think I think there's going to be some crossover here for sure, especially, <laughs> particularly, I believe, between me and Mr. Delisio, because I think 90% of my gaming <laughs> has been with Mike this year, with the exclusion yeah. of the other 10% that he just plays by himself. That's true. That's <laughs> There's true. a lot of that. Yeah, yeah I think his, that's probably from, fair. From his point of view, I hope you realize you're the 10%. I you know. Ten of games by himself. And the 90% was by himself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it is funny. You guys are very much lining up. You, you did on the top 10 surprises. Yeah. Uh, and I, I imagine you will here as well. So I think, I think you you'll see now. a bit of that. Yes. Yeah. You two, I think you two now are the, the two that have the closest uh, tastes in the Dice Tower. Well, we don't want that. There can only be one. Yeah. I think a lot of that is just because we played so much stuff together and not beat. at conventions. Did you figure that out? Z, I used to be, I thought, most in line with your taste. But then now that you exclusively play heavy Euros, I don't know if I can say that anymore. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You mostly play party games and pick on me from afar. Correct. That's true. <laughs> virtual, That's right. virtual picking on you, yes. I'm very excited to see what you guys have in your list. Let's get started. Here we go. The best of the best of the best. Let's go. All right. Let's kick off this best of 2020 list. And on my number 10, I actually have a crossover with Z Garcia. Now, wait a minute the first one of the list it's not a crossover with this list it's a crossover <laughs> with yesterday's list a, a list a game that was on z's surprises this is Spoiler. endangered endangered is my number Ooh, 10 game 10, of huh? 2020 yeah Ooh. i really really enjoyed this game 
Uh, it started with the theme. That's what drew me in. I like cooperative games in general, uh, not only because they can be played solo in most cases, but uh, the theme on this was something that I really found to be uh, engaging. And then the gameplay was something that surprised me a little bit. And so, well, if this hadn't have made it on my top 10 list, it certainly would have made it on my surprises list. I didn't want any crossovers there. And what really most surprised me about it was it has a nice mix of familiarity with some really innovative twists. So it has some things that feel familiar to other cooperative games you've played before, where you've got kind of an events deck that are going to do bad things that you have to mitigate against. But what I really liked was that you have kind of the spatial element on the board where you're having to kind of manipulate animals to avoid environmental threats or whatever the case may be. There are different modules for different animals, but you've got a hand of cards and some of the cards you get are further actions that you can put out there for everyone to use. And some of them are thematically tied to whatever character you're playing. So if you are like the the, the TV, I can't remember what the roles are, honestly, but they kind of tie yeah, You're like a TV whatever. reporter and you can yeah. give uh, the issue more exposure or whatever, yeah. Exact. Thank you. Yeah. So I really thought that was a clever uh, twist to the kind of familiar cooperative game uh, formula. And the theme I thought carried through nicely. I really enjoyed Endangered. And it, this one kind of snuck up on me and it charmed me. So that's my number 10, Endangered. Nice. Awesome. So my number 10 is a negotiation game with a space theme. I know people always rag on me for liking space themes. My little dice guy over there has space on him. But this is Moonrakers. So this has deck building in it. Oh, wow. And you're working together to try to fulfill these different things, but you're also trying to figure out the way to get the most points. There's this whole negotiation in between how you're going to split up the different things. And there's also a little bit of press your luck sometimes with the fact that it's a deck builder and you can end up drawing cards and you can end up having cards in your hand that you didn't know you had when you started going out on the different run there for the trying to rake the different the different different types of missions and things like that. And it's all about trying to talk the other players sort of into like letting you win or letting you get close enough to win to be able to push yourself over the finish line. Um, this is very enjoyable and a nice looking game. I really enjoyed Moonrakers and it's just a lot of fun to play depending on the group when you're like arguing and bickering <laughs> back and forth about yeah. how how you're going to go out on these missions and, oh no, don't take Roy. Oh no, Mike, he's got too many points. We need to not take him this time. Right. And it's just always, I really enjoy games like that. He gives me that cosmic encounter feel but also like has that deck building element so it's really enjoyable and that's why moonrakers is my number 10 yeah nice i like how i like how early on everyone's really happy to work with each other it's like yeah sure i'll go and then yeah, yeah. get closer to 10 points nah <laughs> yeah 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 all right guys my number 10 my number 10 is a cooperative game as well like uh like mike's but this one i found a little bit more innovative and i uh i also find it Prettier and a more interesting ooh, ooh, theme for me. I know what it is? This is what is it? It's that one about killing mammoths that I was no help with. That is correct. You are <laughs> terrible at this game. Yeah, you were horrible at this. Oh. Paleo. Paleo is my number ten. I was um, the weakest yeah. link for sure, man. <laughs> Thrown you to were like the... pro pro Magnum. You were like yeah. super pro. Yeah, yeah. Thrown to the wolves for sure. Um, <laughs> This is a fun one. This is a card game. It's all a card game. The box is my, my one niggling sort of uh, negative, or, or one of them, I guess, would be that the box is really big for what's in there. It's a, it's a card game. Mm -hmm. But the game is engaging, and I like that the cadence of the game is not the same old, same old thing of do a good thing, do a bad thing. It's different than that. It has its own rhythm. It's got this uh, a, the, the, a nice uh, push towards a resolution being hampered along the way by, uh, you know, this track advancing against you, uh, you know, colossal encounters with monsters that you're simply not equipped to deal with yet. But you know it's in there now, and it's like, hmm, once I go around this deck one more time, Beastie, I'm going to take this monster down. <laughs> I like that about it. I like that sort yeah. of, you know, um, it gives me a little bit of the feel of uh, a Robinson Crusoe as well, where you encounter something, you can't deal with it, but you'll be back around, and then you'll deal with it later. So that's neat. And I, I've, I've realized I really like this theme, like, a lot. Mm -hmm. The the cavemen, you know, Neolithic settings, mm -hmm. I really enjoy those. So, yeah, Paleo slips onto my list at number 10. Good call. 
Look, I don't I don't want to start out a top ten list by being defensive. Oh boy. <laughs> but I, I need to feel I feel a little defensive here on this one. If oh. only because I'm gonna get garbage for this being so low. First Why do you hate all, this game, Tom? <laughs> it's on my top <laughs> ten of the year. Garbage. Second, I made this list two weeks ago and it actually would have moved up since then. Oh wow. Thirdly, it times with Shut up, it's a great game. Let's get off my case. All right, Dwellings of Eldervale. Oh, uh, you don't like oh. it? Oh, wow. Tom, I thought you liked the game. How many games did you play this year? I, uh, 11 actually, games. I had that number. <laughs> 11 <laughs> games. Uh, no, uh, I was just shy of 500, actually. But, um, yeah, Dwellings of Eldervale is amazing. I would like to tell you a lot more about it, um, but I am not. I mean, I think it's an amazing, great game. But I'm not marrying it like maybe another person here is. You don't really need to talk about this like literally <laughs> at all, Tom. Well, let's uh, let's move on here. <laughs> but it is fantastic. I'll just say that for me, the I like fighting in games a lot, but I hate when it happens and I crush the other person's spirit doing so. If that makes sense. Yeah. And in this game, I can do it, and we have fun at the same time. If that makes yeah. so, that's that's just a lot of fun for me. So. Dwellings of Elder Vale, fantastic game. And I'm so sad because it actually bumped another fantastic game off the list to number 11. But I'll talk about that in about an hour and a half. All right. <laughs> Right. My number nine is a really, in essence, a small card game, and it's in a pretty small box, too. This is Nidavellir, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and I am assuming I'm not, but hopefully you can follow along. This is a, in essence, a set collection game where you are trying to basically hire trolls, and there's what are three taverns, and you are bidding to be the first one to get access to these trolls, and they all have different kind of classes. So you've got like warrior trolls and they all score in different ways. And so it's essentially a set collection game. But what made this game so fascinating to me and why I really fell in love with it the first time I played it was the bidding mechanism where essentially you've got five coins that you're using and you're placing them face down, one for each tavern. And so basically the highest coin will get the first shot at what the trolls that are out there that you can, can hire. But you've also got a little pouch. And the two coins that you don't use to bid for the trolls, you flip those over and you take the addition, the sum of those two. So if I put a three and a five, I would get rid of the higher one, the five, and I'd pick up an eight from this little market of coins. And then on a later turn now, I've got an eight coin that I can use to bid for these trolls. Ooh. And what I like about it is that that happens when you turn over your zero coin, right? So obviously you're going to get probably last choice in that tavern, but you're still going to get a card. And that's one of the things I really like about this game is that you, you get to feel clever, but you don't ever feel like, oh, I just ruined my whole game there because I got outbid. You're going to get a card. It might not be the first choice, but you're going to get a card. It is just such a smooth, elegant game, and that little twist of being able to add those coins together to get, and you can even try to work it so that if you're going to try to get an eight and the eight's not there, normally you'd get the one that's lower. In this case, you'd get the one that's higher. So sometimes you're trying to make it work so that you're getting a coin that's not there so you get the higher one. Really clever system, plays really quickly, a lot of fun. Nidevalier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get off my case about my pronunciation when you said it three different ways. Nidevalier. <laughs> I like that. Tabular. Sounds amazing. I really like that. Uh, you I would like played this. this one, obviously. The, I, I know like you it. would like it. I think you'd love it. I gotta, I gotta get on this one. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. So my number nine is based off of a previous game, which would break Tom's rules. But I never played that previous <laughs> game, and this game came out this year, and I really enjoyed it. It is Chibi's in a space-themed game, and that is Starcadia Quest. Wait, you never played Arcadia Quest? I never played Arcadia Quest before, <gasps> so I this is valid on my list. Boy. Wow. So, um, How I, are you I, at a convention? 
I really enjoyed Starcadia Quest. I think it was a lot of fun. You have all these different upgrades you can put on your character and lots of different powers for the different characters. And you're running around a starship trying to blast the bad guys and, and get, get points and things like that for them. And it's really cool and interesting. I love the way the miniatures look for the game and all of the different cool little aliens. And there's like robot pals you can have that have swapping heads in the um, Kickstarter stuff and lots of exciting <laughs> stuff going on in Starcadia Quest. A lot of this is like the wow factor of the way it looks and how much stuff you get in this game which is a massive amount, but sometimes you just want to play a light, fun, silly game where you're chucking dice and messing up monsters and messing up your opponents. So uh, Starcadia Quest is my number nine. First time I've played a Cadia game. A <laughs> Cadia, the Cadia line. The Cadia yeah, line. left? Cthulhu Adia? Cthulhu Adia? Don't, don't, don't tempt them. Do not tempt that them. That doesn't sound, Stop, doesn't just sound kidding, right. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, my number uh, my number nine is a game that I thought was felt very original this year. This is the Search for Planet X. Ooh, I a, thought this would make your list. Yeah, it's a deduction game. We don't get a lot of those, but also it's both a very usable one with an app implementation that's great, but a thinky one. So you get the best of both worlds. It's a really you know it's an in depth one. It's one that's very thinky with nice levels. So you can dial it up, the difficulty. But then it's got this, the usability is just so smooth. This feels like a, a board game designed by a, an expert iPhone app developer, if that makes sense. Because it's very clean. It's very streamlined. Everything just sort of works the way you expect it to work. And I really enjoyed it. This is a great deduction game. It's one that I don't know if it's getting a lot of uh, attention. I, I suppose maybe the cover could be something that people overlook mm. but it's a great game and if you enjoy deduction games at all and you're not you know completely opposed to apps i suppose you've got to get uh this one to the table i really I think recommend. this one hasn't got a lot of buzz because renegade just didn't seem to push it that hard this year that could be that could be as well oh, and yeah. it's uh, that's unfortunate because uh it definitely deserves to be pushed and it deserves to get some wide recognition the search yeah. for planet x my number nine a great game I'm not yeah, usually a fan of this. space games, but I really want to try this one out. Get <laughs> out of here, Roy. <laughs> Shut up. This is probably on your list. This is probably on your list, and you haven't even played it. I'm Correct. searching space? for the time to play the game. There you go. All right. Uh, my number nine is also Dwellings of Utterbale, moving it up to keep people happy. Uh, <laughs> the chat rioted on, on Tom there. Uh, uh, number nine. Again, I made this. Okay, doesn't matter. Number nine. <laughs> It's a game that's almost as big as Dwellings of Elder Vale, another massive Kickstarter that came out earlier this year, and that is Monumental. Mm. Monumental, the first of several deck builders. I'm just loving deck builders these days and because they're doing different things with them. And what I loved about Monumental was the little – you have this three-by-three three grid of your city, and you pick a row and a column, and you get to do all those cards. And you wipe them out, put on the next ones. Also, I heard I haven't actually done it. Oh, I never mind. You all saw me do it for real, but it's good solo. I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, but I love the miniatures. They're not a hundred percent necessary. I love the art. I love the theming. It's a civilization game. That yes, it's really a big deck builder. But that yeah. Civ stuff is in the background, and I just really like this one. I, I I feel a little bad about recommending it because I know it's difficult to get. If you weren't in that mm -hmm. Kickstarter. I mean, I'm sure they'll run another one. I would, I would be very surprised if they didn't. But whew, what a good game, Monumental. Awesome. Well, would you know it, I have two games about trolls back to back on my top 10 for the year and i did not realize that until look this inward moment, so. and do some introspection <laughs> <laughs> my number eight is in the hall of the mountain king this is a game that just it, it impresses me so much in pretty much from top to bottom the production is gorgeous the artwork is fantastic and uh the the the, the game trades inserts are the good kind, which actually aid with the setup and tear down and make sense. Um, but the gameplay itself is where it's where it's at. It's what it's all about. And so the idea here is that you are controlling a clan of trolls 
and you are trying to dig in this mountain and you're trying to get as close to the center as possible because that's where the valuable resources are. And you're trying to build temples and things along those lines or, or statues actually is what they are. But this is all done through a very, very innovative, I think, and clever resource production and management system where basically you've got in front of you a tableau of cards that's called your trolls moot. And it is the collection of trolls that you are going to gain throughout the game. You start with a certain number of them, and they all produce particular resources. But you're going to be adding to them in a pyramid style. And what is so clever about it is that when you trigger a resource gathering turn, basically you're choosing one of your trolls, and it's going to trigger that troll and everyone below them in a cascading fa fashion. But if they've already got resources sitting on them, they're not going to produce again. So there's also a kind of a, you've got to get them off of the trolls so that you can use them so that when you trigger them, you're getting as many resources as possible. So there's an efficiency aspect to it. There's a timing aspect of it. Uh, if there's even a tetromino uh, pieces aspect to well, it. because I Just the, tell people that it has game trays and that's why it's on your list. It's that's not game trays, but, it, it, but it's much more than that. It's a really, really solid game. Um, I like it a lot, and uh, I think you should check it out if you have. And this is another one that I don't know has gotten a lot of buzz, but I, I think it should. My number eight, In the Hall of the Mountain King. Mm. I'll tell you, there's a lot of deck buildings Tom was talking about. There's mm -hmm. also a decent amount of, like, pyramid building games, and I don't mean, yeah. like, that's a theme. I mean, right, that's right. the mechanism. There seems to be a lot of those lately, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, Roy. All right, so my number eight is a game that I played with the three of you, and probably a big part of the experience is working together in this game. Um, I'd never actually Aww. finished any of the other games in this series, so this is a series. There are previous games, Tom, um, but this is uh, Pandemic this is Legacy. Game. Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Um, I don't really want to spoil anything about this game, but uh, it, it's just the whole Pandemic Legacy thing is just. An exciting experience and you unlock things as the game goes along and just the whole way that everything worked out with this with like the passports and working together and playing things off of each other and trying to figure out how to progress in the game was such an enjoyable time and I really enjoyed the way the game worked and there were just so many like aha moments of like oh that's how we do it or like oh no that happened again and Z's terrible shuffling every time it was great oh my gosh <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, the, I do remember guys, that. Guys. I do remember wrecking our first turns like four to, four four games in a row. That's true. <laughs> right. But but, uh, but yeah. I had a I had a secret objective you guys didn't know about. It's <laughs> <laughs> a joke, people. It's a joke. There's no such thing. <laughs> but yeah, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero is my number eight. Definitely a very enjoyable game. All right, my number eight is a game that. Uh, I very much enjoy, even though Tom hates it, Dwellings of Eldervale. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, it's um, it's a great hybrid game this year. It's been a it's been a good year for a lot of different kinds of games. I mean, I just looked at uh, a neat co op. I then looked at a at a deduction game. This is a great mm -hmm. hybrid game. I uh, will save the rest of that for others in our group, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful and you should definitely if you enjoy that style of game at all give it a look that's my number eight dwellings of elder vale well i'll do a crossover with z my number eight also dwellings of okay that's we'll, we'll end <laughs> that make... joke now that was good there my, yeah, <laughs> my number eight is a crossover with z and mike also from their surprises list i like okay. this game so much and i was hesitant to introduce it to them but i thought i think they might like it and they did and that's beyond the sun now, I love 4X games, but they're very long. My favorite part of the 4X is the, you know, the learning new things, which suddenly that X has slipped my mind. That's uh, expand, exploit, exterminate, and... That's exploit. Is it? Yeah. No, it's expand. I, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Technology! X-Tech, X yeah. <laughs> X-Tech. Anyhow, I love technology, and this game is a giant technology tree with a small mini board that's way more important than its size um, that you go around and then collect planets and stuff. But the tech makes sense. It's a, basically a giant worker placement game where the workers, the spaces for the workers progress. And this is not the mm -hmm. only game on my list that does that. 
Uh, I like that. That's just a great combo. I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed it, but it easily made my top 10. So that is Beyond the Sun. Good stuff. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, for my number seven, uh, it's a big, audacious Kickstarter game. Tom talked about those. This is this is one of those, I think you can fairly say. This is Tidal Blades. Uh, Tidal Blades really? is a game wow. that... Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. This, this, uh, I knew that I liked this the most of our group. Um, but yeah. uh, I really, really enjoyed this game. Now, to be fair, also, I've played it a fair amount solo as well, whereas I don't think any of you have. So that's also yeah, played into my... Is what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah clearly, yeah, right. after the game I played with the four of you, I thought I might never play it again. But I gave it another shot. No, I'm just kidding. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoy it. I mean, first of all, the production is is gorgeous, if audacious, and maybe the box size could have been reevaluated. But that aside, uh, I love the art. I love the world building too, and that's something that uh, I found that I really do like when I feel like I'm being put into a world that has some things that feel familiar, but is unique. And this one was one of those. It has a really clever dice upgrading system. Uh, it's really a worker placement game, but the really the dice upgrading is the, the big hook for me. Uh, I really, really have enjoyed uh, Tidal Blades quite a bit. And the more I've played it, the more little wrinkles I'm finding. So I, I'm excited to continue playing my number seven, Tidal Blades. I wonder that maybe that the... Uh... The solo thing might might swing it up there because I like the game. It didn't feel mm -hmm. like top 10. It felt like at the beginning of the year, I thought mm -hmm. this would be in my top 10. Yeah. But it felt a little, there's just a few small things that knock it off from that for me. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. My number seven is a app-assisted deduction game with criminal things going on and you're trying to figure that out as a team and that is Chronicles of Crime 1400. So this takes the Chronicles of Crime and takes it into the medieval ages but adds in some extra mechanics where you have like these kind of like diorama sort of things or pictures that you're seeing that kind of help you suss things out. I love how this is app assisted and it works together. You work together as a team and you're trying to figure out basically what happened in the different case. And then afterwards you have like a little quiz of like, did this happen? What happened? What was the answers to all of these things? And you score yourself based off of that. I think the technology behind this is awesome and the way it works. And I really enjoyed like just, just playing um, together with everyone else, trying to figure out what was going on in the game. So Chronicles of Crime 1400 is my number seven. This could have almost made it on the list just for having the dog as a character. That, that I know. That's by awesome. far my favorite part of the game. <laughs> sure. I, I mean, I love this, too. I just, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's a, you had a rule you followed. I, I right? followed my rules. I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just put the games that I really loved on this list. So, you know. You go, and I also man. put them at the correct numbers. You... So, you know. Don't you be, be ashamed you. of your tainted list, Roy. Don't be ashamed of your tainted list. <laughs> bah, bah. Tainted list. <laughs> All right, my number seven is uh, all about the hidden but ever-important market economy of honey and the bees that manipulate that ah, market. Ah, this is your top oh, ten. World. Yeah, Honey Buzz is my number seven. It is a gorgeous game. It is a quirky game. It is one that takes mm. a little getting used to, for sure. But it is enjoyable. It's I, I'm not a big fan normally of... of Let's call it stock market manipulation. This is on like the fringe of that, okay? But there's some of that, gathering stuff, selling that stuff off, and the value of that depreciating, right? Yeah. So there's a little bit of that, and then some some order fulfillment and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's engaging. It's one that you always feel like you want to do three things, and you get to do one and then sit there and sort of wave people out while they put their little bee workers and you hope you can still pay for the thing you want when your when your turn comes up and then you they don't take your spot and then you go there and again you do one thing out of three you want to do and sit there again so it's got that great tension but it is all softened by the beautiful components and the welcoming if a little silly theme <laughs> yeah this works for me um Honey Buzz is a neat game, one that I would recommend to 
folks that perhaps look at it and think, oh, this is fluffy. This is going to be too light. No, there's some there's some interest here that I think for even for those of you that that might write it off, you'll you'll discover that. So it's honey also an excellent example of taking a smaller game, not too small, but like a medium yeah. game and making it the production just on point, yeah. you know, but without making it a massive Kickstarter, like a straight right. forward, nicely done game. Yeah, yeah, like all the components have a reason for being there. It's yes. not like suddenly now right. now there's like a tile holder rack that mm-hmm. increased the price by $40, you know. Mm-hmm. Everything in there is a piece that needs to be in there. They're just yeah. really nice pieces. I agree with that. Right. I would say the yeah. honey gummies didn't taste as good as I thought they would. <laughs> right. But um Yeah. That's right. Don't forget we'll you need to replace two of those for Z. They weren't as <laughs> oh, delicious oh, yeah. as they appeared. I, I'll wait a couple yeah. weeks and I'll I'll get them back to them. <laughs> no, a couple weeks? What is going on with you? My number is seven. Really, you got to get checked out. <laughs> it's another crossover. And this is with Mike. And this is Nidavellir. I Ooh. really like this game. I'll tell you what, I didn't think much about it. Someone told me that they said, Tom, you're going to love this game. So I hunted down. We got a copy, I think, uh, from overseas. And we played it. And I instantly emailed them, said, I want this to be Dice Tower Essentials. But it was already coming out from another company. But man, this game is like Splendor, but quadruple as fun. It yeah. has that same exact feel. Collecting stuff, the coin system works so well. And then these extra cards that you get that give you points in different ways are so unique and different from each other that mm-hmm. you'll collect different ones each game. It's, it's oh, such a smooth, amazing game. Um, it's not in wide release probably yet. Hopefully next right. year more people can hunt it down. I, but I, I love this game. Nidable Air. Fantastic. Nice. Hmm. All right. My number six is one of the, uh, troops on a map style games you might call them and it's hard to stand out in that crowd because there's so many games like this but this one i feel does this is mezzo and mezzo is uh themed around mesoamerican gods and you are trying to basically rise in the pantheon of the mesoamerican gods and so first of all i like that they went a little outside of the ordinary with the theming and i felt like that you know you see a lot of you know greeks and 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 romans and those types of things when when you do troops on a map. This distinguishes itself in that way, but it also is, I feel like, one of the most streamlined rule sets for these types of games I've ever seen. It was not difficult to learn, it's not difficult to teach, it plays relatively quickly, but it gives you a really satisfying experience. Some really unique twists on this genre of game where essentially you're trying to control different regions on a map, And so that feels familiar, but the way that you control it is not necessarily familiar. And you can win a region, but still not get all of the rewards you want. You can lose a region and still get the rewards you do want. And so I like games where you feel like you have some agency, even if the best laid plans don't always work out, you have some type of backup plans that if you were clever, you can still pull off. And Mezzo really does that. I I was surprised at how much I liked this game, because I felt like it was going to be just another Troops on a Map game, and I don't think it is. I think it feels very unique in this space. So, that's my number six, Mezzo. I got to say, Mike, this is, you may be one of the few people to put that in a top ten. Not yeah. because it's bad. It's a good game. I like it. But, man, this game has gotten no buzz. It, I know. it was a very low Kickstarter. I thought it'd be, like, yep. all these amazing miniatures. The yep. gameplay came out. Like, this is a game that looks like Blood Rage. It almost right. fits in that category to some degree. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yep. it's a neat theme that most people don't use. Mm-hmm. It has a cool model of someone floating on water that's coming out of their yeah. thing, and I still don't know how that works. But it's a, yeah, it's a good game. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. My number six is a game that I know was on a couple people's surprises list. And uh, I love Marvel. And uh, Marvel and Chibis and Awesome Miniatures in a cooperative game this is Marvel United. This is no. 
I really, I really enjoyed this game. I played it with with the crew here. We played it a couple times. It was a lot of fun. And I also played it with my kids. And I'm really excited to see how much more I can even like this game when more of the stuff comes out for it. But even as like the base stuff, I've enjoyed painting up the miniatures and playing with all the different stuff that's in there. It's just a lot of fun having your your team that you're trying to work together on playing the thing and the thing that the previous person played. You're copying that. There's a lot of interesting things going on in this game as you're trying to knock out the the different henchmen and. The, the thugs and rescue um, people from the town and the bystanders and stuff like that. I've had a lot of fun playing Mar Marvel United, so that is why it is my number six here on the list. Wow, I was not expecting that yeah, at all. I, um, you must have gotten one of the Walmart copies. Those are better. <laughs> I can't tell if he's being sarcastic about the not. I'm. I. I, I knew this would be on Roy's list. It's yeah, Marvel, man. Not. No, I really. I really did not know. I, I hear him now talk about how he painted it and played with the kids and all yeah. of that, and mm. I can see why. You know what I mean? That certainly would help. But I am surprised. I mean, that game is. Um, I would not have readily associated the the game play with something Roy would like. That's all. It's a very very light it's, game. It's very straightforward, but I think it's just. I don't know. I've. I mean, the fact that we're all locked in, I'm playing a lot more games with my kids and family. I'm always looking for yeah. something that fits in that. And, you know, Marvel. Like, come on, Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I like it a lot, but I think once all that other stuff comes out, I think um, yeah. it will go up a whole point or more for me. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, we'll yeah, 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 sure. All right, my number six is uh, a game called Mariposas, which uh, AEG wow. put out, and of course from the same designer, and this is the big thing that everybody kind of you know gravitated towards this game because of the fact that it's from the same designer as Wingspan, Elizabeth Hargrave. And I got to tell you, I believe actually she submitted this game before Wingspan, but the the pressure must have been tremendous with the so-called sophomore slump to not hit, yeah. even though technically she's got another game out as well. But I got to say, this is not Wingspan. At it all. is not. It's no. not that. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It's so different, and it is excellent. It's an excellent, engaging, strangely thematic mm -hmm. Euro game. Mm -hmm. It's one that really utilizes its world, its setting, the idea of these uh, butterflies migrating north, breeding, uh, you know, uh, going through generations, and then making their way back down as the seasons change. And that plays out on the table, even though you have a lot of, you know, mechanical things to consider. I found it very engaging. I found it really interesting. The whole time I, I every time I play this game, the whole time I am playing it, I find myself sort of fascinated by the the research that must have gone into it to discover mm -hmm. all these things and then fold that into a playable set of mechanisms. So it's a wonderful game. It, it is. It's a, quite an accomplishment. Mariposa says, my number six. Yeah, I think it says a lot about Elizabeth Hargrave as a designer that those mm -hmm. two games do feel so dissimilar and they're both so solid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, that she's really staking a claim with, you know, like you said, three games, but one of them was a very small card game. But with these two yeah. games, she is really, really staking a claim as one of the biggest names in board yeah. gaming. Yeah, for sure. Agree. All right, Mike, I mentioned that Mezzo was a game that you put on your top ten that no one else did. I think that's what my number six is also. Mm. I love this game, but I have not found as many who agree with me or at least talk about it much, and that's Dominations. Yeah. It is another Civilization game. It is a very involved one that unfortunately can drag down to analysis paralysis if you play with four or so. But other than that, though, this this whole, it's it's all cards, and you are using these cards and building out a grid in front. Well, it's not all cards. I guess there's this triangle grid out there. The civilization thing is very <laughs> tacked on, to say the least. Just a touch. <laughs> Just a touch. It's 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 yeah. it's a very mathy. It's a, it's, a, it's a Euro game, really. Yeah. But you're collecting all these different technologies that all give points. I mean, there's thousands of different ways to play this game. And that's not it, including the five expansions they put out for the thing right. with more technologies and more stuff. It's neat, and I really enjoy it. I Every time I play it, it's one of those games that when I'm done, even if I lost, I still look at what I've done and go, <laughs> I put out, you know, I, I put together all these cool card combos and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the different types of technologies give you points in different ways. Ah. I know that, again, I know this game did not come out to a lot of buzz, but I really enjoy it. Dominations. 
This is one I have not for some reason. I've seen that cover. I just mm-hmm. went and looked it up because I'm like, Dominations, which one is that? Ah, okay. So I looked through a couple of pictures here, and this looks really good to me. This looks like my kind of thing. I'm getting a yeah. vibe of, like, Viceroy. I'm getting a vibe of, yeah, like, uh, sure. you know, Deus maybe a little bit or mm. that whole, what's that one with the Roman theme? The You know, um, yeah, yeah, this is this this looks neat. I'm going to have to check this out. Very yeah. nice. It, it's, it's a $5 fee from the library. You can check it out. <laughs> All right. Then you... All right. All right. We're at the top half of the list. We're getting ever closer to the games that Tom actually likes. So... <laughs> uh... <laughs> The fact that this game is my number five, I think points to what a strong year I feel this really was in Not board games. Not saying it's a bad year, people. This was an amazing year. Mm-hmm. This was a great year. And the fact that I've got Viscounts of the West Kingdom as my number five game points to that fact. Because I think it's a fantastic game. And I still think there are four that are slightly better. So Viscounts of the West Kingdom is the Another last in the game. West Kingdom trilogy. And this one, like Thomas said, kind of the trend this year, one of the many trends, has been Deck Builders Plus. So Deck Builders with something else. And so in Viscounts, there's a deck building element, but there's also kind of a rondelle type of an element where you are moving around a circular-ish board and you're taking different actions through clever card play. I am unabashedly a fan of these games, these Garfield games, the, the, the North Sea games and the West Kingdom games, even more so. Um, and they are all fantastic. I think Viscounts might sneak up to being my favorite of the West Kingdom games. I'm not sure yet. I, it's the newest. So I have to take that into account. But I have really, really enjoyed this game. And like I said, I, I can't believe even on my own list it's at number five. But it is. That's my number five, Viscounts of See, the, the West The problem, Kingdom. Mike, is you're a fanboy of too many things. <laughs> and it all collides. It collides in these top tens. You're like, well, obviously, I love every Garfield game ever made. And then, oh, well, but I also love every other. You know, it's, then it, he has I'm these. I'm a fanboy of good design. And this ooh, is a great ooh. design. Ooh. Architects of the crazy. West Kingdom is a great design. Paladins of the West Kingdom is a great design. Prove me wrong, Vassal. I'm not proving you wrong. I'm just saying you're a fanboy. <laughs> Maybe. You are. You need to like fewer things and turn up the bile. Dial. That's right. <laughs> to <laughs> file dial. <laughs> so that's so my ready. new show, by the You're way. Saying? Coming to Dice Tower after dark. The file dial. Z Garcia. That's tough. <laughs> Just me that hating on so... stuff for about half an hour. No, Roy. <laughs> All right, my number five is a game from a theme that I really enjoy, but this is a worker placement game that actually has combat in it as well, and this is Fallout Shelter. I know this was on some people's oh. surprises list. I really enjoyed Fallout Shelter. This is one of the games that after we played it, I'm like, I got to buy a copy of this game. I really enjoyed it. It's extremely simple. I've actually played this with my kids. I've played it with my parents, and they've enjoyed it as well. So I played it with a variety of different people, and it's always worked extremely well. It's a very interesting game where you're placing out workers to gather these different resources and then um, build out your shelter and build your different levels to try to increase the happiness of the people in the shelter there. Whoever has the most happiness at the end of the game after someone has built out their entire level wins the game but there's all these monsters popping up that you can get guns and weapons to be able to fight off and if you fight off the monsters you can get more happiness for your shelter um it's a very interesting game i like worker placement games with combat it turns out um very interesting (laughs) game i really enjoy it fallout shelter yeah good game that's good stuff all right, my number five is uh, a game in which you are. It's a worker placement game as mm-hmm. well, and there is combat in this one also. It's uh, very enjoyable. I don't know if the rest of you played it. It's called Fallout Shelter, the board game. Huh. And <laughs> Never heard of it. It is excellent. <laughs> is this a crossover I, um, same number? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Crossover, crossover on five. Crossover on the same number, mm-hmm. back to back. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. I agree with everything Roy said. I think it's a it's a great game. I'm I was very surprised that first game we played. I think Mike talked about this when we did top ten surprises. We all kind of yeah. looked at each other like, is this really as good as we all seem to <laughs> like as it's getting? It's getting real yeah. good, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really good. It is an excellent game. It's incredibly engaging. I, I 
needed to pick up a copy for myself. That's how much mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. And it's just every time I play it, I have a great time with it. It's a, a quick hitting worker placement game. It's got great bits. It's a pretty game. The looks hide a game that has more depth than you would think. Yeah. It blows the video game away. It really does. <laughs> um, yes. Everything about it is neat. I, I don't even mind the tint, to be honest. It kind of looks like a lunchbox, wow. so it's okay. I, I think I'm... you went a little far there, but okay. No, it's not the worst tin. It's <laughs> it's it serves a purpose kind of because yeah. it looks like a lunchbox, so it sort of works, sure. you know. We're anyway, almost like yeah, this yeah, game doesn't deserve to be this good. Like, how is this even possible? It was yeah. just shocking, you know. It was really good. If you're watching this someday no. in the future, just be clear, we're talking about Fallout Shelter, not the original <laughs> Fallout board game from Fantasy Flight. That did not make our top tens. And I do I do find it interesting that Z's slide. Um, for his pick was also a picture of me playing the game with my kids. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, sometimes... I that myself. <laughs> sometimes companies seem intent on getting us to not play their games, which is <laughs> I always find problematic, and that's the case of my number five. Mike mentioned this yesterday, and that's Whistle Mountain. Yeah, Whistle uh... Mountain, which looks like Whistle Stop, or the expansion for Whistle Stop called Rocky Mountain, has nothing to do with those games. But when I got it, I threw it on the shelf, and I was like, yeah, I'll get that whenever. You know, I don't care. Mm-hmm. And right. finally, I pulled out, and I was like, wait, this the rule set looks different. And then I played it, and I was like, we got to play it again. <laughs> Mike, play this game. Yeah, and you were very excited. <laughs> because it's a worker placement game, which I like. But this one, you create the spots your workers go to. Mm-hmm. So you can make this really cool spot because they get stuff that they're, they're touching, and you build around it. And every game is different the the technologies and all these cool things and man i i would hesitate to call this game a looker like it's not yeah. bad it's not no. a bad game but it's not a game that people probably when they walk by your table will go well let me look at that they won't mm-hmm. but oh is it so much fun to play this is a game that should be getting more buzz yeah. uh because it's that fantastic that is whistle mountain all right All right. The fact that this game is number four on my list. Oh, my what, okay. but I feel like I should say that about all these. So um, <laughs> my number four is a charming, charming game in an increasingly crowded field of polyomino games. This is uh, my favorite polyomino game, Isle of Cats. Wow. Um, Isle of Cats is just such a good game. It is fundamentally sound it is charming in theme. You're trying to rescue, well, if you like cats, if you're not a monster, vassal, um, you're trying to rescue these cats off of an island that are that's facing some kind of an impending doom. And so your player board is a boat and all the cats are doing their cat thing and they're stretching out into these crazy poses like they do that are represented by polyomino shaped pieces. It's thematic now that way, yes. It's very thematic. <laughs> now, so far, so I've seen that before. I get it, but... There's also a huge element of the game around drafting scoring cards. And that's one of the things that's so great about it is that some of these cards you're drafting are for end game scoring. Some of them are ways to get more cats onto your boat. So they're kind of multi-use cards. You can use them for different things. It is just so well designed. I I feel like this game was just play tested to the nth degree because every time I've played it, it has, I, I've not been like, oh, that just felt a little bit off. The economy feels right. The placement rules feel right. The scoring feels right. Everything about this game I just think is charming. That is the Isle of Cats, my number four. A uh, quick note here. Uh, I know as many people in the comments are calling this a 2019 game. This, this yeah. is definitely 2020. It came out at the very beginning of this year. And I know that the beginning of this year does seem like a decade ago. <laughs> but it was it's a 2020 game. It's listed in BGG as 2019, but, yeah, but that's wrong. the vast majority of people, I believe, got it in 2020. Awesome. My number four is a pirate theme game that is also web app assisted, but this has amazing like narration and dialogue, and that is Forgotten Waters. This is a game from Plaid Hat. It's a cooperative game, and it feels almost like a... 
I don't know, like a storytelling, like adventure game as you're all different pirates trying to upgrade the stats of your pirates and try to become a legendary pirate in different ways, but you're working together to try to keep your ship together and fulfill different scenario objectives. There's all sorts of crazy mystical things to explore in the game and the narration in this game. I really hope that that like narration in board games catches on because the voice acting is amazing in this thing and it really draws you into that pirate theme and that pirate world and I really enjoyed the storybook aspect and pirate placement on the board there to build up your <laughs> ship in Forgotten Waters, my number four. Before we go any farther, it's it's always important that we talk about Paola. Uh, um, and Roy likes this game, but mm. I believe Roy did one line of voice work for it or something. Honestly, somebody needs to let me know if they ever hear it, because I <laughs> apparently me and my wife both did it, but... Uh... But no, I haven't ever actually gotten to that part in the scenario or heard my part. It probably sounds oh, it's only when you win. I was like, <laughs> it was so funny because when they asked me, I was like, I know some professional voice actors. You want to get them to do it? Because, <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. Huh. All right. Well, uh, my number four is a game uh, that I designed. If we're gonna go this route. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, just kidding, folks. It was like a couple lines, and you just did it for fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my number four is a game that I game know. I know the rest of you don't really like as much, but I was uh, very taken with it, still am, and I think it's uh, it's up there with the kind of game or the kind of audience uh, that Azul typically, uh, uh, I think, is um, targeting. This is Coatl, mm. line number four, in which you are building these uh, Coatls. They are these, you know, snakes, giant, giant snakes. And the colors that you are building them with, the patterns you are building them with, is what you're going to be scoring based on, okay? You're going to be drafting cards. Those are going to be assigned to your uh, the three snakes you'll be building over the game. And based on those patterns, you'll score victory points. I really like it. The drafting's good because you're drafting cards and uh, the, the little snake, plastic snake pieces. I uh, find it kind of breezy, but at the same time, every now and then you want to slow down and sort of go... Okay, what do I want to do? What am I trying to accomplish here? The cadence in the game is supremely important. Since you only score three snakes, you have to make sure you score three. It is possible, if you're not on top of it, that you end up scoring only two. If you don't finish the, th the third one, you don't score it at all. So, yes, it can be punishing at the end, but you, you, you'll you learn that. You that's, a, that's part of the game. you got to stay on top of it, Tom. Um, <laughs> actually, I don't know if you did that or not. I have no idea. I'm um, not alone in my not thinking. I don't think this game's bad. I just think no, that you could I play Nita Valir. I haven't right. played it, though. I haven't played that one. Maybe it'll kick this game completely off my list and out of Get my collection. But as, as of right now, I really do enjoy this one quite a bit. It's a looker. If you Again, if you enjoy the kind of games that Plan B puts out, I think you'd like this. Quaddle, my number four. Yeah, you cannot fault the the art direction and the components. I mean, it, it really is a stunning-looking game, for sure. All right, well, Roy is on point today. What? Another direct crossover. Wow. Roy number four, Forgotten Waters. Oh. And I'll say this, folks. Plaid Hat is back. Now, yeah. I, don't, I don't believe in this whole selling out is a bad thing. Like, when Plaid Hat went to Asthma Day, I didn't think, oh, that's a bad thing. But the fact is, over the past few years, Plat Hat games have been okay for the most part. They're good, but they felt like they were missing something. So when they left Asthma Day in their first game, which they had worked on while at Asthma Day anyway, but Forgotten Waters, I was like, okay, it's pirate theme, but eh. And then I played it, and it was just great. It's certainly almost more of an experience than a game. I mean, there is a game in there. There's worker placement, and, sure. and, you, and it's very easy to lose. I know this. <laughs> um, but the story is so well done. The voice acting is, I'll say it's the best in all of board gaming. Ooh, go Roy. Go there Roy. Go, Roy. Oh, I've never heard his voice. I would, I would have dropped it a point. How many lines did you have, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I've never done voice work for anything. I don't think. Okay, dice oh, tower. Tom, you're doing it now. Let's just, uh... <laughs> I'm not for anything important. But, oh, okay. Um... No, you're right about it. But uh, I, yeah, this game is a lot of fun. It's very piratey themed. Mm -hmm. Each story has a different captain who you get to really know over the course of that series. And they've hired a different person to play the captain. 
because you do so much interaction with the captain. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I love it. They're, and they're great. It has a fantastical background to it. You mm-hmm. know, there's right. mystical, cool things happening. I love it. Great game, Forgotten Waters. Awesome. All right. All right, my number three is a crossover with Tom Vassell. Any guesses, Tom? Oh, it's monumental. It is absolutely monumental. My number three like is monumental. Uh, when when Tom described this game to me, because he had played it first, I immediately thought, oh, okay. Um, you know, because he described it as it's deck building, but you've also got kind of a troops on the map thing over on the side. And I thought, oh, okay. I mean, I'll, I guess. But then I played it, and it was just fantastic. I mean, just that little hook of what Tom was mentioning, of having that grid in front of you, and you're choosing a row and a column, and you're trying to to utilize that to the best of your ability, and you're trying to get new cards in that are going to make your deck as uh, powerful as possible, and then kind of taking it from that... It's almost like you've got an inset of that map going on. You've got your your city in front of you is like an inset yeah. of what's happening out there on the map. And I really liked that kind of zoom in and pull out feel that the game gave, gave me, where I've got this kind of high level thing going on over on the map and I can do that. And it's related to what I'm doing in my city when I do the zoom in and I get to do these cool card things. Just a very, very streamlined system for as big and grandiose as it looks on the table. It's actually a pretty streamlined system. And so I was really taken by how much I liked Monumental. I will say before this year, I thought I wasn't a huge fan of deck builders. My list is full of deck builders. So that's my number three, Monumental. Hmm. Awesome. Hmm. So my number three came out this year. I know there was a previous version, but I never played that game at all. And I know Tom (laughs) likes this game, so he can't give me any crap. It used to be his number one for a little while there. And this is Project Elite. This is a game about being all these different commandos and like space aliens coming in. Space theme again, of course. And all of these different aliens are coming in and it's real time. And it, it gives me kind of like that escape curse from the temple vibe. But you're like blasting away waves and waves and waves of aliens and you're working together as a team. There's all these cool miniatures that are in the game for the different units. Um, I really enjoyed playing this one um, cooperatively and working together as a team and being like, oh no, we, he ran past us. I got to run back and get him and don't let him get to the gate and just be like, oh no, the boss came out. And like the 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 thing that it does, it just makes you kind of like puts you in that world with it's like two minute time of playing the game, being all frantic, then stopping, more bad guys come out, then you keep playing again, and it's just really exciting, and it was definitely an, a great game for me. Then the first time I played it was this year, and this version came out this year, so my tainted list is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not going to argue put Project Elite. That's a great game. Great game. It's okay. okay. Amazing game. Good. Never played. <laughs> Service. wrong. Service. All right. Why? Well, I, I oughta. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, my number three is Pandemic Legacy Season <gasps> Zero. A wonderful Pandemic Legacy. Yes, it's number three. This concept's been around the block a couple of times now, so I, I guess maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, I also played with the guy, with the guys you're seeing on screen now, so there's that. It was definitely going to take a couple of hits. It wasn't going to be number what? one. <laughs> um, I... I uh, I would have been number one, but I took away one point for every person I hated playing it with. If you can, <laughs> if you can do math, that means I hated playing it with two of you. But which two? I'm one. I'll let for you sure. figure that out. Um, <laughs> anyway, no, I really like it. Pandemic Legacy, of course. Uh, the the season zero thing was a surprise that no one quite saw coming. I really think it's a great setting. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, the game recycles a lot of what really worked in one, what really worked in two, and then gives you several new things to contend with. I think I think that they did a great job of um, picking greatest hits, if you would, to put into this one. And uh, it's just fun. It's hard to talk about because I can't talk about spoilers, but yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, Pandemic Legacy, if you like these games at all, you, you got to check this one out. It's, it's great. My number three. So I cut you know, the reprints and redones and stuff like that for my list. But I thought this one was different enough. 
So my number three is also Pandemic Legacy Season yeah. Zero. Tainted list. This one. See, this I didn't one, put my. Oh. I didn't put this on there because I. I so. I have the only pure list, is what we found out on this. Oh, whatever. Right, it just means you oh. this game. <laughs> Guess what, Mike? You just became one of the two people I hated playing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. We had a lot of fun with it. And we were very hesitant going in because of the actual pandemic. But this game shone a light on a different side of things. Did so in a very different way. And of the things we can talk about in it, the, the passport book was such a brilliantly fun idea yeah. that worked really well. But the best thing about Pandemic Legacy Season Zero, I think, was that every single game was different. Every single one. And the other, they did it a little bit in Season 2, but in Season 1, you did repeats of games, especially if you lost them. Yeah. And and this one, even if you lose a game, the next one's slightly different. So, and that's just neat to me. And I we just had a blast, so... Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Awesome. <laughs> 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 Nothing to see here, folks. All right. My number two. Good. I'm glad, was... Mike. I'm glad. <laughs> Z? All right. Uh, remember I was saying a moment ago about this deck builder with a twist thing being a big thing this year? My number two is Dune Imperium. Um, wow, 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 is this a good game. Um, it's just so smooth. I, you know, this was another situation where I was playing it for the first time, and I was looking at the people around the table and I, because I was like, am I the only one that thinks this is as good as it is? And I realized very quickly, no. We were all really, really into this experience. It's, you know, it's deck building, but has some twists on it where each card that you play can let you go to a certain location. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I have a feeling it's not going to be the last time it's mentioned. But this is just such a good game. It, it's great. Dune Imperium, my number two. Awesome. So my number two is also a worker placement game and i know that i'm probably the person with the highest this is the highest on their list and i actually really enjoy this game and that is dwellings of <laughs> elder vale i i love dwellings a of elder vale it is, it is a yeah, great yeah, game right, right. um i don't know why mike doesn't like it but um i thought it was great <laughs> and uh I, I i just really like the whole like atmosphere and magic that goes on in this game and uh, basically, like, the way everything works together. There's, like, you're trying to combo off, like, getting your magic built up really high to be able to, to duplicate your dwellings points. And also these cool magic cards that you can get and play in different areas. And these cool action cards that you can get and play and, like, trigger off. Like, you're putting your workers out and getting resources and starting combats and pulling your workers back and getting resources. And you're trying to figure out how to do all of that at the same time. And I just really enjoyed this crazy mystical magical theme with all of these giant monsters that you're battling off against and trying to stay away from depending on um where your current strength is in certain areas but um a lot of fun dwellings of elder vale i i love this game so it was great do, do people not realize in the comments that 4,000, 5,000 games came out this year number 10 <laughs> out of all of those is really good uh, tom you're getting roasted I'm <laughs> so tough. I'll, I'll stand for <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. <laughs> All right. My number two is only my number two. I, I think it's only my number two and not my, num my number one. Kind of went back and forth on this because it felt a little cheeky about Tom's rule. Okay. <gasps> I didn't feel right to have this as number one. The best game of the year. It's not a new game. Not really. My number two is Unmatched Cobble and Fog. Mm. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you do love this one. What about Marvel? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Marvel's coming out. That's that's mm -hmm. true. But you know what? I don't even know if I'll necessarily like that the best. Because I am, um, you, you guys know, up. well, as you guys know, I don't necessarily <laughs> like to mix uh, sort of entertainment right. buckets. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's um, true. I love it. This feels so removed. Like the liter literary characters based on novels written 100 years ago, feels very removed. Marvel, mm -hmm. 
I don't I I'm I, I think like comics or movies. I don't necessarily think games. But Cobble and Fog is a fantastic books, set. I just want to clarify that. The movie What's thing that? is very recent. They were books a long time before they were movies. I can read. Uh, Cobble and Fog <laughs> is uh, just a great collection of four characters that all feel extremely distinct. They feel splashy, especially Dracula. Disgusting. Uh, they are um, just very engaging. I think it's a fantastic set. I think it's the best on match set that's come out. And if you have not played the game and you're curious, this is where you want to jump in. If you are at all okay with these, you know, Dracula and uh, the Invisible Man, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, this is where you want to jump in with both feet. It is going to wow you, I think. So, yeah, Couple on Fog, unmatched, my number two. All right, my number two is a crossover with Mike. Same spot, same place, Dune Imperium. Man. Yeah. Dune Imperium. Now, I had first heard this about it on Rodney, talking about it on a podcast. Rodney was downplaying it, saying, I like it, but don't take it. I'm not Rodney Smith. When I tell you a game is good, I mean it, and I stand behind it, and I don't have to give any kind of... I'm just kidding, Rodney. I don't have to give any... <laughs> it's great. Dune Imperium is great, and the only reason it's number two is because they don't have the upgrade kit out yet, and it doesn't mm. look amazing. It looks fine, but it right. plays. This company, I mean, they're... No... Their, their last game, Clank Legacy, was my number one last year. Now I got them my number two this yeah. year. This is solid stuff, folks. This wow. is building done right. I said it in the review. I'll say it again. It's better than the original Dune game. Mm. And uh, I wish we could watch the new Dune movie, but whatever. <laughs> I'll play this game until then. It's super duper. I Dune hear the company, is, uh, the company is putting out a uh, Phase 10 reprint next year. Ooh. How's that going to go? Over it must now? be good. It must be bad. <laughs> I'm like splitting in the two. How oh, precious. <laughs> awesome. All right. My number one game of 2020 Every, is so shocking. That. The worst kept secret in all of board gaming. <laughs> Apparently, look, what can I do? It's Dwellings of Elder Vale. No, I'm not good. I wear my heart on my sleeve, okay? I'm an <laughs> open book. Wait, this was higher than mine? Yes, this is higher my number one yours. game of 2020. And I'm going to say this. You know, we're, we're going to be, you know, making preparations for our games of all time i really feel like this is going to be very high up in my games I'm highest games of all time. wait wait you're team. spoiling next, a future list me. too i'm next not future. i'm just telling you i haven't made the list yet i just have a feeling this is going to end up you know in a in a, in a very esteemed area because it's i'll go one step I've... further it's going to be his number three there i said <laughs> there you go z you guys are ruining we'll everything see. everything we'll see but it's rare that I play a game where even games I really, really like, and I don't walk away going, man, that was great, but there's like one, one thing I wish they had done differently. I really don't think there's anything that I would do differently in this game. I mean, I really, really, really love this game. The, the, the worker, I like worker placement in general, and I feel like this does worker placement really well. Nice little twists on having different workers that do different things, but not so much that it's a huge mental load to remember. A really cool system of these magic cards that Roy was talking about and building up this tableau in front of you so that you can place the worker and do an action and pull it back and do a different one, which has been done before, but this is slightly different. I just, I love the game. I love the game, Dwellings of Eldervale, and you all can mock me all you like, I'll sit here with my pure We're list. We're not mocking you. I just wish good. you'd shut up about it because I'll just take the more you talk, the more. Someone said it was too low on your list. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I think they said it was true. too low on your list. Shut up, <laughs> see, see, I'm trying to deflect oh, here. Oh, good try. All right, Roy, give us but your you non-surprising number one. You right. My number one is actually kind of upsetting. I'm kind of annoyed. The same publisher... That pub that made my number one last year made my number one for this year. That is Dune Imperium from Dire Wolf Digital. 
I really enjoy the uh, the Dune universe. I grew up watching the, the movies and reading the books and and playing the other board game from Dune, and I really like that whole theme around it. And um, when this game came out, I was immediately excited. I mean, not just because it has Imperium in the name also, but... Um, I, w- I, I didn't know how it was going to work with all the deck building stuff. I really enjoy all of the clank deck building, but the whole deck building and worker placement and working, racing to get to that 10 points and trying to figure out how to manipulate the board and maybe even manipulate the other players to make that happen is super exciting in this game. Racing up the tracks, trying to stay in the top, and then Z Garcia steals it away from you and makes you lose That's that right, one baby. point you needed to pass over 10. And then Tom just keeps winning all these combats and Mike Delisio the spoiler for all these different things. Things. It just makes for an exciting game um, each time you play it. I'm super excited about the upgrade pieces that are going to be coming for it as well. But even in the game as is, I feel like is amazing. I just got my pre-order in like yesterday, and I'm so excited yeah. to finally have a copy. As soon as we played this, he I went He stopped out. working, and he sat in a corner hugging the game for a while. <laughs> I did immediately. I, like, normally... I take selfies of pictures with games away from people so they don't see me because that's shameful. Yeah, no. But I was like, I don't even care. I'm taking a selfie right now, no shame. posting this on the internet, no shame. right in front of everybody. No shame at all. Um, I really mm-hmm. enjoyed Dune Imperium. If you haven't played this game and you enjoy games that have that backstabbing sort of thing in it a little bit or, or cool deck building moments or racing up to try to like get to 10 to win, um, this is a great game to try, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So Dune Imperium. Uh-huh. My number one of 2020. Roy, how many uh, sci-fi and or space games are on your top ten here? I'm curious. Listen, I don't, like, try to figure that out. Uh, you want me to ask? Chad already knows. Yeah, but, but, uh, it's got to be, like, seven, right? I mean. Listen, if I had played Search for Planet X, it might have made it on two. I was trying to make sure they were all space. You're so defensive. It's almost like you put Dwellings of Eldervale at ten. Don't get defensive. Wow. Listen, if yeah. Dwellings of Eldervale was, than that. was Dwellings of Space Vale, you know, it might have made it right. to number one. All right, my number one, uh, <laughs> now for something entirely different. <laughs> no, one, no one has talked about this. No one is going to talk about this. I don't know why. I'm not trying to be a hipster with this pick. <laughs> I just really, really like this game, and I know Tom played it and didn't really like it. So I don't know. The Grand Carnival. Is my number one pick of the year. No! <laughs> yes! It's good! I'm sorry, this folks. Game I apologize. Is fantastic. He's wrong. Fantastic. This game is so good, Tom. Uh, you need to be quiet for a little bit and think about what you did to dwellings. Okay. Think about what you did to dwellings. <laughs> uh, the Grand Carnival, I think, is an excellent tile laying game. It's not. Um, it's got a little bit of everything when it comes to tile laying. I like that about it. It's got the polyomino thing a little bit in a really engaging way, very cutesy, cartoony way, very charming 1930s, you know, a, a Disney illustration sort of vibe to it. So it's got that. But then it's also got the the sort of area building that you, that you get in something like Baron Park, where you need to develop the grounds on which you're going to build polyominoes. Great, love it. So it's like two levels of tile delay. And then on top of that, you've got visitors visiting your park and traveling through it. So there's this traversal aspect to the game. They are buying tickets at these different locations as they walk through them. But on top of all that, and that sounds like there might be a lot going on, the game is incredibly simple to play. You take an action on your turn by by taking a a pawn or moving a marker or whatever, and they are numbered one through five. That number represents the strength at which you are doing the thing. So if I pick the three first, I can take a tile, and it can be up to the third tile in. If I then do the five, I can move five steps for my little guys. So I got to know what thing do I assign the one to, right? Uh, Because that's obviously not as good. I really enjoyed the way that worked out. Very little setup. Extremely quick to play. Engaging. Lovely theme. I am blown away that Tom does not like this game. That's why it's my number one. (laughs) (laughs) He just hit us. Stick it in. Yeah, yeah. No, I really, I really, really like it. I think it's a great game. It deserves way more attention. It's it's not going to get a lot, but um, it should. It's it's good stuff. All right, I've been waiting. A year to talk about my number one, because (laughs) this came out in 2019 in German, but there was no English copy till this year, and that Uh, is 
the crew. Mm -hmm. The crew. Trick taking cooperation. Nobody's talking about that one either, Tom. Limited not, not heard of communication. This yeah, you you live in your obscure corner, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm living in the past. Look, I love this game. I really do. And it one of the things I like about the crew is it works in so many situations. I've taught it to so many people. I taught it to my in-laws of all people, but they like trick taking games. They and and that they got it. You know, there's just something about it. I've definitely had a bomb with people who who don't like trick taking. You have mm -hmm. to like trick taking to get into it. And the cooperative nature is weird to people who are cutthroat at trick taking because mm -hmm. this is the very opposite of what many trick taking games yeah. people want to pull knives out afterwards. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think what's really strong here about the crew that I like it so much is the fact that this is one of the first games I played this year in a sense. I played all, every other game after it and it's still this strong. You know, it is just a fantastic game and I, I really love it. Um, so that's my number one. Now, before we go any farther, there's a couple games that have been mentioned that we have not played yet. Uh, we, mm -hmm. the new Stefan Feld game, Bonfire, we never got a copy right. of that. Mm -hmm. Howler Tau, the new Rosenberg game is technically a 2021 game. It's not yeah. being printed in English till next year. February is the date on that. And there's a few other games. There's some, I think in the mail, you know, we have a whole list of games that were supposed to come out I've, I've made a document already to keep track of it there's that many a lot of kickstarters were delayed and things like that yeah also i never like to make just 10 so at four o'clock i'm posting my 10 next best games because i want to talk about my 11 through 20 so some of the games you all were screaming at that i didn't put in there you'll probably see in that 10 <laughs> also Douglas Vader Vail has moved up three spots since i started talking <laughs> here. yes Keep it going, baby. Keep it going. Now we're talking. The stock market of dwellings is <laughs> so crazy. Right. Uh, so, no, it's just, there was so many good games this year. It's really yeah. hard. And again, when I make these lists, I'm not saying these are the best for everyone. These were the right. best for me. Yeah, exactly. These are the ones exactly. I enjoyed the most. So, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good stuff. Definitely All so right. many good amazing year. things. Good, 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 good gaming year. For sure. I agree. Folks, come back at four. Like I said, I'll be doing that top ten. And then Z's going to be playing live. And then later but, on tonight yep. at I'm, eight o'clock. Glasgow. Man. Glasgow, by the way. Oh, Glasgow, mm -hmm. yeah. I need come to get that one that out. Yeah. Tonight at eight o'clock, Mandy, Suzanne, Eric, and Ella will be doing their top ten games of the year. So we have whew, so many, so many, so many. Yeah. Lots of lists tomorrow, too. So they keep coming. Sebastian says your number one surprise of the year would land on what spot in the top 10 of 2020? Oh, my number one, my, for me, my number one surprise for this year would have been number 12 for me. For okay. me, number 11. The list. Huh? Yeah. Mine was Beyond the Sun, and that probably would have been my number 11. My surprise yeah, list the, was just shocking. So I just yeah, put the ones that the shocked teens me. Somewhere in the for me. My, my surprises sort of kind of function as my 11 through 20. If yeah. you jumble them up a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's. But there was some I were expected to be good, like my number eleven, just straight up number eleven. So, yeah, you know, didn't make the surprise list. Anyhow, folks, we got to get going here. There's still more, and there's another whole day tomorrow. We counted up. There's ten top tens going up tomorrow. Ten. <laughs> ten. It's a lot. And when we're done, I'm going to do the top ten of those top. No. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm going to rank them. Right. Number ten <laughs> was the first one we heard. <laughs> All righty. Uh, we'll see you all later. Come back at 4 o'clock. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm C. Garcia. Thanks, everybody. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Roy Kennedy. Also starring Dwellings of Elderville. Woo! <laughs>